Hi, my name is Spencer Nugent from SketchAday.com, and today I'll just be going over a quick sketch process using Sketchbook Pro 6 to sketch and render a shoe design. I'm an industrial designer by trade, and so quite often I use Sketchbook Pro to quickly visualize uh, my product concepts and create a quick and easy color rendering. As you'll see here, the video is sped up quite a bit, but just wanted to kind of show my sketch process. Most of the time I do use either a custom brush or the built-in pencil brush as it tends to work really well. Um, one of the great things about Sketchbook Pro is just being able to quickly iterate, make changes, and work with overlays on layers, if you will, as you're designing a product. So using the pencil tool, I'm able to quickly add details as needed, emphasize my outlines, and plan for my rendering as I'm going through the process. I also love being able to just zoom in, work on the details of the design. In fact, I'm traditionally an analog pen and paper kind of guy. And so when I sketch and sketch with Pro for quite a bit or any other digital medium, I find myself wanting to zoom in on the paper because it's such a neat feature to be able to really zoom in and work on um, some details or emphasize line work, as you can see. So as I'm building my line work, I'm trying to create contrast even hatching in and really treating this as I would a sketch on paper. Because the better the sketch is, the better the rendering will be in the end. You can think of it as uh, building a building. You know, if you have a good foundation, then everything else should kind of work out as we go here. So now we're just about done with the rent with the sketch portion of this uh, exercise. Again, it's really sped up, and so that was about 15 minutes right there. So kind of the way I work is by color blocking in my main areas first, and then subsequently adding tones and shades as I uh, work through the process. So you'll notice that um, because I have good sketch lines, I can then just easily block in the colors. I'm representing different materials for example on a shoe and uh, later what I'll do is tone those colors using blending modes and the awesome awesome airbrush tool to kind of tone and shade and create a 3d effect if you will because we're working in a two-dimensional medium even though it's digital um, we have to create the illusion of three dimension by using proper technique one of those is by adding shadow cores and highlights when necessary so as we go through this process of uh, color blocking you'll see that I am planning and mentally preparing for the next phase of that so I'm just gonna go ahead and keep blocking out materials here some gray for a different material using my color picker and just working with a solid hard brush um, not perfectly hard but just a little fuzzy on the edges just enough to soften slightly so again everything's layered so I'm not worried about masking out the laces for example or some of these other parts because I'm gonna be going over on top of this with uh, another color so for example here is this orange I'm just gonna block in those areas where I want the orange to show by adjusting that layer position I don't have to worry about cleaning up below and so here you can see with the laces I don't have to worry about the the gray that I put down before because the orange is going to be masking that it's 100% opacity so there's no uh, pass through there I'm coloring my laces and just add a little dot for flare so almost ready to start toning the colors here once I've got again all the materials picked out and blocked out I'll be ready to kind of shade and tone and create that 3d effect right now it's almost like a color by number type of exercise but you'll see the the reason behind the rhyme here or rhyme behind the reason <laughs> however the saying goes So just a little bit more here, clean up with a hard eraser, changing some of my layer blending mode. So I've made a new layer with the multiply blending mode and I'm using a very soft airbrush 
Sketchbook Pro has really great airbrush tools. I actually really love them. And in fact, it's amazing how precise and subtle the airbrush tool is, but it really does give you a nice uh, subtle way of adding tone. So you'll see that I've added a shadow core along the portion of the shoe that would be um, convex or rounded. And so there's a little bit of reflected light underneath. New layer, layer blending mode, change that to add so that anything white will um, interact with the colors below by lightening those colors. Okay. Another layer here, multiply, just adding some shadows under the laces, for example, to create the illusion of depth or three dimension. You know, you can imagine that there's a light in this scene, and because of that light, we're casting shadows. Um, you can even differentiate with materials a little bit here with that layer on multiply layer blending mode, which is great if you're using shadows to bring out some detail in your sketch. New layer, added some white to the laces and to any other parts on the shoe that, that would need it. So you can kind of see just by adding, I'm just working with black and, black and white right now um, with different opacity. And what that'll do is it'll, again, just bring out the detail or contrast in the sketch to, to help make it read as a three-dimensional object. And of course, by playing with the opacity of those layers, again, I'm using pure black and white, I'm able to either increase the intensity or decrease the intensity of, of those effects that I'm putting in. For example, on the top here, using the airbrush tool again, adding a little bit of white, I can bring out or show that you know this scene is kind of lit. Here in the heel of the shoe, I'm adding some detail to show that there is a shadowed area and erasing to clean that up so it's a little bit a little bit more crisp. And I can kind of do that in whatever other areas in which this outsole is kind of mold, molded, or midsole or others is kind of molded. Sometimes digital sketches can feel a little plastic, so what I like to do is just kind of keep a nice sketchy loose feel when I do create them. And so rather than pulling in a texture, I'm going to just sketch in a little mesh texture here for the uh, toe of the shoe. So you can see just by hatching my lines here, cross hatching, I'm creating a nice mesh texture. Let's clean that up with an eraser and make that fit. Change the blending mode to multiply and crank the opacity down and there we have kind of a, a mesh or perhaps a nylon texture on the, the toe of this athletic shoe. So pretty simple and easy. Again, Sketchbook Pro, really powerful tool for just quickly visualizing ideas. I don't really render in the program per se, but rather um, use it as a, a visualization tool, much like I would have my pad of paper and, and pens and markers typically in a traditional setting. Well, there you go. That's typically how I work in Sketchbook Pro and just another example of uh, the power of Sketchbook Pro in, in terms of creating and representing ideas quickly, able to iterate and show those ideas on, on using layers with colors and, and textures and so on to, to bring out the design. Thanks and be sure to check out sketchaday.com where you'll find much more of my work.